Okay, so I, I usually tell creepypastas, some of which you're bound to have heard of, but... Today... I got thinking about some experiences when I was younger. They could probably be easily explained now that I look back, but... At the time, they were terrifying. There's nothing like the terror that a child feels when they're totally convinced that something horrible is about to happen. And I decided to share some of these things with you, and perhaps hear some of yours. Anyway, um... The picture is very much related. It's a screen cap from Google Maps of the small wooded area I used to spend a lot of time in when I was younger. I lived in the area from ages 3 up till 10, and during those years, I went into the woods more times than I could count. God knows why. Seems they used to terrify me. The woods were apparently named Devil's Woods. I'm not sure what the official name was, but the local teenagers called it that to scare us, younger ones, and it worked. Because a lot of strange things happened in that place. So, as with all places like that, there are rumors and legends and whatnot that went around there. I mean, one of the favorites was the old tale of the gypsies, who are meant to live in the clearing at the back. Which is the narrow end that you can see in the picture. Well, apparently a few gypsies set up camp there, and as all witches and gypsies do in stories, they like to kill children. One of the utmost dares that you could get when we played dares was to go to the back of the woods by yourself, touch the last tree that you could, and then return. I had to do this twice, and both times, strange things happened. The trail to the back of the woods is a strange one. It zigzagged from side to side, taking really difficult routes, and several times, the ground rose up in huge humps that were murder to navigate if you were on a bike. It would naturally get darker and darker as you progressed, even though sometimes the trail would take you very close to the edge. It, it's always stayed dark. The first time I went to the back of the woods, I was as a kid would be, who had just been dared. I was going to do it, and I was going to take my time doing it too, to show all the older ones how scared I wasn't. Now, this sounds cliche, but I always say cliches only become cliches because they're true. I mean, the deeper that you go into the woods, the stronger the feeling of dread that you felt. It was deeply unnerving, but. A child's pride is a lot stronger than the fear, so I pressed on. I reached the last turn before the clearing and paused. I had sworn I heard something in the clearing at the back, and suddenly... The previously ridiculous stories of evil gypsies came flooding back to me. I crept up the corner and peered around, and... I think... That was the first time in my young life that I ever truly shat bricks. There was an old caravan there, a small one, because they would have to have towed it from a farmer's field, but a caravan nonetheless. Well, that first time that I didn't take too long to look at it, I was terrified that they, they, they were even there waiting for me. It didn't occur to me that the caravan was in a serious state of decay. I turned and I ran faster than ever, and fuck the trail! I just ran a straight line through those trees the whole way, swearing footsteps thudding behind me. I tried to tell everyone when I got out, but I know they thought that I was just taking the piss. I guess it, it just looked like I'd gotten scared, ran out, and tried to make up a story to disguise my fear. However, I kept on and on about it, and eventually my friend Connor had enough of my rambling and told me if I was so sure, we'd go in there again and I could show him. Just to know what you need to know about Connor. He is fucking insane. I'm not joking. He had no fear whatsoever, and basically any trouble in the neighborhood, you could bet your bottom dollar it was him. I, I usually got dragged along under the I know stuff on you boyo card. So, me and Connor set off after lunch. We were around eight, I think. He was, as usual, bold as brass, strutting into the woods like he owned them. I was a lot more timid, still terrified that gypsies lurked behind the trees waiting for us. I think Connor thought I was making it up, but sure enough, when we reached the clearing, there it was in all its battered glory. See? I remember shouting triumphantly before I realized that I could be drawing attention to us. Before I had the chance to persuade Connor to run like fuck, 
He had walked right over to it and pressed his face against it. <laughs> you idiot. Not lived in. Before I could stop him, he pulled open the door, which nearly fell right off, and went inside. As you can imagine, the inside of the small caravan wasn't really that interesting. Old leaves on the floor, mud scuffs, if anything of value had been there, it had been stolen. It took Connor about five minutes to get bored of it, pop out, and let me tell you, I was glad. I, to try and disguise a little of my fear, I took a walk around to the back of it. The very back of the clearing was full of thorns, loosely knit bushes, so it was basically a dead end. However, there was a distinct hole in the thorny bushes, and I peered closer to find that loads of old junk had been thrown in there. There were old sleeping bags, empty packets of food, water, and alcohol, some old magazines destroyed by the rain, just useless stuff like that. However, one thing leaped out at me as being kind of strange. It was an army jacket. Not the type that you can buy in shops, but a genuine army jacket with regiment badges. The only thing was the Velcro surname slip it had been ripped off. Of course, there being an army base close by, Connor wasn't that disturbed. However, I had seen the soldiers often, and they were certainly a proud bunch. I couldn't imagine any of them getting rid of their uniform, or deserting, or anything like that. Connor was obviously bored now, and was taking the piss out of me for my epic escape from the forest. And I was getting fucked off, to say the least, so... Just as I was about to tell him to shut up, something caught my eye in the undergrowth close to the clearing. I only saw it for a split second, but I could have sworn it was a man watching us. He was crouched in the undergrowth. He seemed to be tattered and dirty in appearance, stockily built, but otherwise not really that remarkable. My breath caught, as it sometimes does when you see something that shocks you, and I wheeled around to see if Connor had seen it. To my relief, he had, and to my secret delight, he finally looked unnerved. Did you see that? He asked me, and I nodded. We decided to climb down to the ditch to the right of us and go through the farmer's field rather than go through the forest, as it was a lot safer to our eyes to risk getting chased by an irate farmer. As we walked on the thin strip of land between the crops and the ditch, we kept silent, eyes on the ground, wonder wondering what we had just seen. We began to notice the empty packets. Old potato chip packets, chocolate bar wrappers, the kind of stuff army guys are given when they go on training missions. High sugar, high energy things to keep them going in case of an emergency or, or stranding. And at one point, we spotted an old, thick green sock just lying there. We were seriously starting to wonder what was going on. I had made a vow to myself to keep that damn place alone now. For the next few days, I kept my promise. There was a weird tree standing away from the woods that had been disfigured one night after being struck by lightning. If you climbed the trunk, you could sit in the large hole the two separated trunk halves had made quite comfortably. There was room for several of us, but I sat there alone while everyone went exploring in that forest. Shortly after seeing the strange man in the back of the forest, weird things started happening in other parts of the neighborhood, which was originally blamed on foxes. You know, bins tipping over and hunted through, claw marks on doors, and eventually small animals like rabbits mauled or killed, and found half-eaten. However, things quickly took a sinister turn when none other than Connor had the sheer shit frightened out of him. I wasn't actually there when it happened, but it was the talk of everyone the next day. Apparently, the idiot had decided to accept a dare to go in there after dark and he had been attacked. It was legit because the police were called in. I had to return home when I went out to see him as the police were arriving outside the house. And when I finally saw him, he, he had some impressive looking scratch marks down his arm. He was of course shaken and it was strange to, to not see him showing off his war wounds. The story eventually trickled out. Connor had been attacked, presumably by the same man that we'd seen. A search was launched, and the woods were placed out of bounds, and eventually the police found him. This man was obviously not right in the head. 
He had fled from the army, complaining that they were conspiring against him. He seemed to think that he was some sort of secret weapon, that he had to flee and, and find his own way in the wilderness so that he couldn't be used as the main weapon in any other wars. I think everyone had a hard time imagining this man ripping rabbits to bits with his bare teeth, scavenging through bins like some wild stray animal, but of course, it had been him all along, and all because he was convinced that the army were out to use him as their ultimate killing machine. He seemed to believe he possessed unnatural powers. When well, the police found him, his fingernails were all ripped to shit. I'm not sure if it's true, but apparently fragments of fingernails were found in the, in the gouged doors, and the same jagged gashes were found on Connor's arm. Naturally, in, in such a small rural area, the newspapers and local news had a field day and stalked the story so much they eventually obtained enough information to attract the attention of the national news. They uncovered several strange things about this man. He had some really freaky beliefs aside from the whole, I'm a secret weapon one. Devil's Woods was incredibly close to the army base. If he really wanted to run from them, why choose a place so close? I mean, well, it turned out that he had also heard of the gypsies and believed that their magic could help him. I always thought it was kind of strange that a full-grown man would believe what was essentially a kid's story. However, I had to take into account the fact that the caravan remained there. And it certainly wasn't his. The police, of course, returned to the woods, trying to find out if the man's rambling had any truth to them, and to discover who owned the caravan. However, they found the clearing empty of any caravan or junk, and fresh tire marks leading along one side of the farmer's field, turning into muddy tire tracks on the road and eventually vanishing. No leads were ever found. They eventually had to give up on their part of the case. However, this strange ex-soldier still kept up his tale of how they helped him hide, how they helped him discover more of his powers, how they performed all these strange rituals. And the most interesting part of it all was that for one such power-discovering ritual, they needed a young child. Connor didn't realize exactly what an escape he had made. His parents shielded him from most of the information. They moved away shortly after. And like I said at the beginning, this is just an old story from my childhood that I always thought was, was rather interesting. At least I got it out there, though.